Hi, and welcome to the McKnight Report. Today we are cooking. We are in the kitchen trying to make it happen. So stay tuned and we'll show you all about it. Thanks. Hi, and welcome to the McKnight Report. We like to give you information that you really want. And so today we really want to talk about cooking. And so we're going to cook and we're going to make salmon. Everybody's talking about salmon these days because it's a really healthy fish. You know it's got all those omegas, omega-3, omega-6. Everybody's talking about fish oil. It helps your memory. It helps your joints. I don't know. It's good for you. So we're going to make a salmon. And since we're going to make a salmon, I thought it would be fun to do something different with it. So we're actually going to poach the salmon. That's right. We're going to poach it. Now poaching, as you probably know, just means to kind of cook it gently. I mean, you want to cook it in a liquid. You want to get it to where it kind of boils a little bit and then you take the heat back down till you just get a simmer. So you're poaching it when you're actually simmering it. And poaching has a lot of good benefits. You're going to use poaching when you have a food that's kind of delicate. So you hear people talk about poaching eggs, for example, that's kind of delicate. And fish, it's always nice to poach fish. Salmon is um, pretty delicate. It's a hearty fish, but it's a delicate fish as well. And so when you poach it, you just kind of cook it a little bit to get it done and you preserve all your nice healthy nutrients in the food. So we're going to poach the salmon. Now when you poach something, you kind of have, I guess, about certain ingredients when you poach. And you want to use something that's kind of acidic. For example, I like to use wine. Um, wine is a really good thing to poach with. But if you don't want to use wine or if you don't like to drink or whatever, you can also use something else like lemon. You can use a flavorful vinegar, like if you wanted to use balsamic vinegar or some of the flavored vinegars that we have these days. You can use anything like that, but you want to use an acid or something that's acidic. You want your poaching liquid, which is water, and we're just going to use regular water. You also want to use your aromatics, your flavorful vegetables. And so for this dish, we're going to use as our acid um, wine. I just have this Chardonnay. This is just this is called Boutique Wildflower, but it's just what I happen to have. You can use whatever you like. I would recommend using a white wine because the flavor is not going to um, overpower your food and it's also not going to change the color of your food. So that's another reason why you want to use a white wine. But depending on what you're cooking, you could probably use something else. Anyway, here we're going to use um, this Boutique Wildflower 2009 Chardonnay. It's from South Australia, but you can use whatever you like or whatever you have. Um, I think that you ought to use a wine that's kind of smelly with a strong fragrance because you know when you're cooking with wine or anything, any kind of um, alcohol, what ends up happening is the alcohol burns off and it just kind of infuses the food with this lovely flavor. So that's why I like to use something that has a strong smell, a very aromatic, because then it infuses the food with a lot of flavor. I wouldn't use a sweet wine. I don't think I would use a Riesling or anything like that. but if you use one and it works for you, let me know. Maybe it's something that we could try. So, anywho, so you got your Chardonnay. You also want to use your aromatic vegetables. And so you want to use scallions. Uh, those are always really good. You want to use chives. And you know, these are fresh scallions and chives. I don't see any reason why you couldn't use the, um, the dried ones or the ones that come in powder on the shelves. I don't see any reason why you couldn't use that. You probably want to use a little garlic. Um, celery is very important to use because it gives a nice, strong, tasty flavor to the food. You want to use um, carrots. I like carrots and um, you know I just use the little ones that come in the bag and I take the little handy chopper. I got mine from Pampered Shelf but you can get it from anybody and you just want to chop it up a little bit. Um, also you could use shallots or onions and if you notice all these things are in the onion family because they're like strong smelly flavorful etc so that's what you want to use to get started with your ingredients the other thing that you want to do for this poached salmon is you make a nice sauce um, and you can make the sauce in different ways um, I like to use a little sour cream because it's a nice flavor I think you also can um, use a little pepper I have the fresh ground pepper here but you could use regular pepper I don't see why not you want to use a little of the Dijon mustard and a little of the spicy brown mustard. And again, these are just things for flavor. If you prefer the yellow mustard, you could certainly use that. The Dijon mustard's kind of nice because it has that delicate flavor and it, it's kind of whiny too, so it kind of goes along with the wine that you've already added. 
And I like to use just a dash of wasabi sauce just to give it a kick. Because, you know, people like the food to kind of have a kick these days. And so I like to throw a little kick in there. Anywho, so that's what we're going to use. And so let's see what happens when we get to the stove. So now we get to start cooking, and that's always the fun part. So when you start cooking, the first thing you want to do is just pour your liquids in and get them started heating up. So, you know, the recipe calls for like three cups of water and three cups of wine. But I got to tell you, I'm one of those cooks who likes to eyeball. I just look at it and I say, okay, how many people are eating and how much do I need? So this I'm making, I'm going to say for probably about two people. And so just looking at it, I'm going to pour in probably about a cup of water, I think. But again, I just eyeball it. There's enough in the pan. That looks good to me. Now, again, we're cooking with wine. And when you cook with wine, or at least when I cook with wine, I like to taste the wine because you don't want to poison your guests. you got to make sure that it's good wine and that they're going to like it. Oh, and they're going to love that one. So we're cool with that. So just pour some in. And again, you can smell it as you're doing it. And that also gives you an indication of when you have enough. You just want to make sure you got enough to give it that nice flavor. And then you go ahead and start. This is an electric stove. And, you know, gas stove, the people who cook on gas stoves are, in my opinion, like the real cooks. Because they, they just look at the flames. They judge how high the flame is. And they go high, medium, low like that. I don't do that. Electric stove, we got it written right here. Medium, high, low. So... I'm going to go ahead and start somewhere between medium and high because I want to bring it up to the big boil and then I'm going to take it down to the low simmer like I was telling you. So while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and start chopping up these vegetables. And everybody has their own way that they chop up the vegetables. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you get yourself a good knife. So I got this really handy Ergo Chef knife. I like it because it's small and I'm small and it fits my hand. And you just kind of want to just chop everything up. And the nice thing about vegetables is when you chop them, they just look pretty. So you don't have to try to chop them in any, any kind of order or anything. Now, the fun thing about this recipe, again, we're cooking celery. And celery is important because it has a lot of flavor. It's one of our aromatic vegetables. You can use the celery leaves in this recipe because normally when you're making other things with celery, you just want to throw the leaves out. Well, I don't like to throw them out because I always feel so wasteful. But with this, you can just kind of throw the celery leaves on in there, and they will actually give your food a really nice flavor. And you don't have to be so, I guess, exact about how you cut it or whatever. You just want to put everything in there and let it start simmering. And the carrots, well, you know, you put the carrots in there as well. And now we have the actual salmon. You can really put it in kind of last if you want to. You can let everything come up to a boil first then turn it down like we talked about and then throw the salmon in there. So I'm just going to go ahead, it's cooking along, it's humming along nicely now, and I'm just going to go ahead and put the salmon in there. With salmon, you know, it's tricky because you want a spatula. I always use two things to work with salmon because it's so slippery and it's big and you want to keep it pretty. Now when I cook this dish, and I do like to cook this dish, I kind of cook the salmon salmon side down if that makes any sense to you in other words obviously you see we have the salmon side and we have the skin side i'm going to just take it salmon side down skin side up that's how we're going to start it and we're just going to kind of let this simmer for well like i said the directions say about eight to ten minutes again you want to gauge your salmon you want to look at it you want to know how fast it's cooking and you want to know whether or not it's you know, you can just kind of tell when salmon is done. So as you're gauging the cooking, as you're cooking the salmon, you just want to kind of eyeball it and make sure it's okay. And we can see that it's starting to boil. we got all these nice, frothy, foamy things going on. We let it do that for a few minutes. And then we just turn it down to a simmer. And it won't take long at all. We're just going to bring it on down. I'll bring it on down to medium and let that marinate as they say for like I said you can use eight to ten minutes as a guide you can use your handy kitchen timer if you're like me and you tend to walk off and forget what you're supposed to be doing so we'll just throw that on and it'll let us know but again I don't even think you need eight minutes because this salmon is not that thick it's cooking right along it's just a chugging away so I don't think you need that much time you want to not move away too far don't get involved in any long telephone conversations because it will definitely get away from you 
All right, so we're just gonna let that work and see how it looks. Oh, what we could be doing is making our sauce, our dill sauce with the sour cream and everything else. But we've already got that prepared here. And as I talked about, we use our sour cream, we use our dill, we use our two different kinds of mustards and a dash of the uh, wasabi sauce. And really you can put whatever else you think of in there too. If you think you might like some tarragon or some cilantro or cumin or something like that, you can try it. You can even put a little curry in here if you want to, but I think that'll take it to the island flavor, which is a different flavor for a different day. Okay, let's just see what happens. We are back and thanks for hanging in there with us with the McKnight Report and our cooking show. We have finished poaching this salmon. Boy, this was worth the wait. But the thing about poaching salmon, you know, is that it just doesn't take that long in the first place. The instructions say, oh, about eight to 10 minutes, but you have to kind of look at it for yourself and judge. The fun thing about cooking salmon is that it kind of lets you know, you know, once you start cooking salmon, it lets you know. And you can just tell by the color, it will change color. Um, it'll get flaky, it'll look like you can just kind of flake it up and Really, it just looks like it's ready to eat, and that's how you know that the salmon is ready. So we finished our poaching. The salmon is all nice and poached, and now it's time to think in terms of, okay, what do we want to do? Well, with a dish this good, I gotta tell you, I think you should always invite company over. Definitely invite somebody over to help you eat the salmon. First of all, it looks really pretty. They can appreciate your hard work. And the other fun thing about it is that it smells good. You can't tell, but if you were here in the studio with us, you could see how good that this salmon smells. And when you have guests over for dinner, you know the house always smells like people have been cooking. So when you have guests over for dinner and they come up to the house, they can start smelling all this lovely um, aromatic wine and the celery and the carrots and everything. And you know, it just gets them really excited about eating. So when you have a salmon like this and you have your guests coming over and you're all excited, this is a nice thing to make for example if you have a romantic dinner and you want somebody to think you really went out of your way or if you're just having a couple of friends over and you want to have something nice for them. But when you make this dish, you always want to think about how do you present it? How am I going to plate the dish? How am I going to serve it? So what I thought about when I made this one was just to get some spinach. And you know you just have the spinach in the bag in the grocery store. They make it really easy. The fresh baby spinach in the bag. And you know, you want to just rinse it a little bit in the colander. Put it in the microwave. I microwave this for about, about a minute, maybe two minutes and you can use some of the poaching liquid. That's what makes it so cool. You just kind of put some of the poaching liquid in here with it. And so it makes the spinach nice and pretty. You get yourself a pretty plate and you plate the dish. That's what they say in the restaurants. We have to plate the dish. So you kind of pour the liquid onto the plate. Be careful because it'll get away from you. You spread the spinach out nice and cool like they do in the restaurants. You got your carrots going on, your celery. Just everything to make the dish look really pretty so when your guests come over to eat it, you know, you want to make them feel special. So you pull, you kind of pull it out here a little bit so that when you put your salmon on top of it, you can still see it. So this pot's kind of heavy. And so don't be afraid to use two utensils to kind of grab it and then nestle it, as they say, on a bed of spinach. And voila, we have poached salmon. I'm Wanda McKnight, and this has been the McKnight Report. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed your poached salmon. We are going to post the recipe. It will be on our website, www.themcknightreport.com. That's www.themcknightreport.com. Com. This is a recipe that we got from cooks.com and we kind of modified it, put a couple of recipes together, took some stuff out, put some stuff in, and that's what you can do with it when you get to it. You can just kind of play around with it. But check us out, information you really want, 